Hello to everybody, friends and family, and welcome, welcome to Jim's 5am Club. And today I come to you from the International Passenger Terminal. And uh, we're going to do a different style of uh, Jim's 5am Club today. I've always wanted to uh, go through and do a bit of uh, an analysis on an artwork that I discovered many years ago as a young man when I was doing uh, art at school and I think it was around about 1975 when I was in year 10 and uh, doing art history and I came across an artwork which absolutely captured my imagination and it was something that's always been sitting at the back of my mind and the artwork that, I relate, that I'm referring to is called The School of Athens and it's a, a painting, it's a wall fresco, a big massive wall fresco painted by the, um, by the, uh, the artist Raphael and it was painted during the High Renaissance in Italy and uh, it was painted around the same time as what uh, Michelangelo painted the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel and this fresco, this magnificent wall fresco was painted in the, uh, in the Vatican, in the grounds of the Vatican there and it's uh, just one of those arresting and most beautiful pieces of, of artwork which uh, exudes a personality which says a story and um, is something worth studying and my advice and my um, uh, my encouragement is for all parents with young children to introduce them to this artwork uh, the school of Athens as it contains uh, a grouping of 30 or more of the world's greatest philosophers, greatest original thinkers and people who are leaders, who are considered leaders, fathers of their fields um, from ancient times and um, it was commissioned by Pope Julius II and it was completed around about 1511 AD but it, uh, it uh, is an artwork which, if studied, if understood, and if appreciated, can, uh, can join a lot of dots and provide young people with an appreciation of the greatness of the people who have come before them and the people who have stood on other people's shoulders or, more appropriately, have allowed us and future generations to stand on their shoulders and to understand and appreciate art and to be able to think and to use their, their brains and minds and free voice and free will to be able to uh, think and look into the future using the past as, uh, as their foundation. Anyway, I'll just give, show you the what the painting or the fresco looks like and I'm not sure that you've seen it before but as you can see there's a, a mass a mass of people there and for many of us who haven't studied this in the past it's an amorphous mass a mass of faces that very very few people could recognize but what I want to do over the next six months is to go through and identify the different faces in this artwork and be able to unravel and to put a face and a name to the people in this, uh, this artwork. So as you can see, these people are scientists, mathematicians, philosophers, um, uh, military leaders, uh, you name it. They're the who-who, the who's who, of uh, ancient Greek uh, um, 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 leadership and many of them are common names 
but unless you know a little bit more about their story they all just uh, blend in together and uh, lose lose the magic so let's do a bit of a walk and talk and a little bit of a uh, an analysis and try and identify some of these figures and understand what this fresco is all about so what I'm going to focus on today is the two central figures which are these two here in the middle that one there and that one there these two which I'm circling and those two figures are none other than uh, Plato and Aristotle and Plato is uh, is considered to be the father of philosophy he's an Athenian who lived in the period 428 to 347 BC and he is said to have uh, started and opened the first university in the world the first school where great minds came together to share knowledge and to uh, enhance each other's knowledge and uh, this painting here is basically dedicated to those two central figures and will identify all the other people over the next few months so uh, let's look a little into a little bit more detail in terms of this artwork and what you'll see is on the left there on the left is Plato and on the right is Aristotle and uh, Plato was Aristotle's uh, teacher and of course Aristotle was Plato's student and just going one step before that um, Plato was the student of Socrates and Socrates will co cover on another day but what's interesting here is and, and a lot of people don't quite understand is Greece had a lot of philosophers and a lot of leaders in their field and a lot of great thinkers um, Hellenic thought is is the one big thing that changed the whole world and today the freedoms that we have, the, uh, the lifestyle that we enjoy is all based or in many ways is based on Hellenic thought and is brought to you by many of these people in this artwork. But uh, the interesting thing that I learnt and I wasn't aware of is that when you talk about Greek philosophy you don't quite get the appreciation early in the piece but uh, Greek philosophy has many, many um, facets to it, many, many different schools. And like all Greeks, um, to get two Greeks to agree on anything is virtually impossible. So that, 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 that stubbornness or that, uh, that, uh, that, that, um, that gene that we have facilitated uh, the very, very many schools of uh, philosophy and learning and enabled people to grow and develop and to examine life, examine themselves in the many different lights. What you'll notice is that this artwork is split into two realms. On this side is the Platonic side which has got to do more about uh, metaphysics um, and uh, the um, uh, and the uh, um, uh, non-seen world, and on the other side where we've got Aristotle is more about reason. It's more about practical, and it's more about the here and now. So the philosophers on this side and the, and the people on this side have got to do with the uh, ethereal side of philosophy, and the ones on this side here are more on the practical and measured and the here and now the world in which we live in so let's go a little bit more into detail and you can see that uh, Plato here is and we know it's Plato because he's the older figure and he's also holding a book in his hand which is one of the many books that he had because he documented his philosophy he documented his dialogues and the book he has is called 
Timaeus. And on the other side we've got uh, uh, Aristotle and he has one of his books in his hand which is called The Ethics. So the big difference between these two schools is as you can see here Plato is pointing to the sky which suggests to the, uh, the audience who are looking at this artwork that um, he's a person who, uh, who believes in the other realm, in uh, there's more to life, there's more to, our, uh, to, to truth than what meets our eyes. He talks about the ethereal theory, the unseen, and hence why he's pointing up and is not um, of this world. The other interesting thing is that Plato is wearing the colours um, red and purple, with red um, indicating fire and purple indicating air. And these are the two elements which are uh, which uh, are not subject to uh, to earth, to uh, to uh, uh, what do you call it? Um, to gravity, which suggests an upward and an outward-looking philosophy. Um, Plato is barefooted, um, which is uh, is of interest, and um, as I said before, he's a student of uh, Socrates, while Socrates doesn't have any written material um, that has survived or that we're aware of, at Plato, through Plato's dialogues and Plato's works, we are able to understand and study Socrates and his philosophies. On the other side you see um, Aristotle holding his book and with his palm facing down suggesting that the world or the truth is all about the actual, the observable, the measurable, what we can see and touch, which as you can see it is a contrasting philosophy or school of philosophy to Plato's school. Um, interest, interestingly uh, Aristotle is dressed in green um, in brown, sorry, brown and uh, and blue, and the blue uh, representing the uh, water, and the brown representing earth, and these are very much earthly things, things that are subject to uh, um, gravity, things you can touch and feel, and things that are of the here and now, and not of the ethereal or other uh, realms. Um, what else can I say about this artwork here is um, that Plato is an idealist um, and um, he transcends, transcends uh, reality and as he said, there is more to, uh, to life, there's more to truth, there's more to, to our being than what sees the eye, than what the eye can see, and there's more than just the physic physicality or the world in which we live in. And um, on the other hand, Aristotle represents our practical sides, and he is surrounded by philosophers, by mathematicians, by scientists who are practical and who can measure and who can uh, do, um, 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 uh, who, can, who can review and, and understand the world in the way we can touch and feel it. Anyway, that's just a, a, a short deep dive or a, a short dive into the, uh, the School of Athens and as I said what we'll do is we'll go through and we'll examine it in, uh, in more depth uh, with time and unravel and isolate and identify 
all the actors, all the leaders, all the people who help shape the world in which we live in today and the way we think and the way we see ourselves and the way we examine ourselves and everything around us. So uh, it's a tricky, it's a tricky journey, it's a beautiful journey and it's one that everyone needs to indulge in regardless of your age. You can't be too old, you can never be too old to appreciate the classics, the history, the classical teachings of the ancient Greeks and to immerse ourselves in that beautiful, beautiful uh, yesteryear. And as many people say, you know, there's, there isn't much original thought in the world. Everything that you and I have ever thought of, everything that anything that is thought of or considered in the world today has been thought of and discussed many, many times over the years. And the problems that we have today have been um, problems that have, uh, that have uh, uh, impacted every generation. And the, the fears, the, uh, the doubts, and the beauties, the aesthetics, all of those things that we appreciate and uh, indulge in have uh, always been around. Anyway, thank you very much for taking some time to join me on this Jim's 5am club today. And um, just to help you understand the, uh, the timeline of philosophers in Greece, I use a little trick to help me remember who was first, second and third in terms of uh, uh, the timeline. And I use the word SPA, S-P-A, to help me remember. And I, um, I imagine myself in a spa, in a warm bubbling spa, sitting with these three great philosophers, S for Socrates, P for Plato, and A for Aristotle, and just blowing the breeze and chatting away and examining life as we know it today and as it's always been. And to remember that Socrates came first out of the three, followed by Plato and Aristotle. And Socrates is the one who is renowned for his Socratic method of questioning and just asking why, 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 why. Anyway, we'll cover Socrates uh, next. But uh, thank you once again for joining me. And let's finish off with a positive affirmation. I'm alive, I am well, and I feel absolutely great. To my friends and family, stay connected, stay relevant. And wherever possible, take the opportunity to uh, indulge and understand the School of Athens, that magnificent fresco in the Vatican there in Rome. And what we'll do is we'll I'd be able to Put a name to each of those faces and gain an understanding of what they did and how they influenced and impacted the world in which we live today. So that amorphous mass of uh, people come to life, talk to us, exchange with us and become one with us today and as well into the future. They're our people, they're our inheritance. Let's make the most of it while we can. And uh, with the beauty of Facebook, with the beauty of vlogging, with the beauty of uh, the internet, we can learn and pass it on to everybody around us. Take care, yasas, and until we meet again, uh, stay safe and enjoy what's, uh, what's uh, left in your day ahead. Bye for now.